We've now arrived here in the Arabian Desert, the world's largest sand desert. But we're starting here. This is Hong Kong. Uh, we're surrounded by water and dense, dense city. So I thought this would have the strongest contrast from where we start to where we end up. I'm Mike, welcome to Downey Live, and let's get to the desert. So to get there, we will be flying three different planes, and I'm not yet sure how we're getting to the actual desert. How badly are we gonna want a Mr. Softy ice cream in 24 hours? That's about it. Door to door, starting here to when we arrive, I think is about 20 hours to get there. I should tell you as well up ahead that uh, I'm not paying for this trip, which is a relief, because they're flying us business class. We are trying to find our way to the Hong Kong International Airport to get started. If you're new here, I'm Mike, by the way. Welcome to Downey Live. I think there's an airport express. Here it is. But well, we are going to the desert for a reason. I'm not just gonna go stand around in the sand for a bit. It's for an event. I just can't tell you what it is yet. I will tell you and show you all of it in next week's video. Oh. So I hope you're okay if I don't tell you too many details beforehand. I'm not withholding anything from you. I just don't know it. Like I don't know how we're getting picked up at the airport, how we're getting into the desert. We're just going with it. We'll be taken care of, but we're just going with it. That's our stop. It's my first time flying Emirates, so let's go check in. We checked in online. We're not checking any luggage. So I'm just gonna head through security. I'll see you on the other side right now. This is better. We're in the lounge. This lounge today seems to be only for passengers coming from Hong Kong to Dubai. So I think we'll treat ourselves to a glass of sparkling wine and relax before this overnight flight. Or if you wanted a beer, there's actually a machine that tips and pours the perfect beer for you, including a splash of foam on top. But it's time to head to our flight. I was telling Nicole about this trip and she said she couldn't tell if I was more excited about going to the desert or flying on the A380. I don't know. I don't know which one I'm more excited about. Because the Airbus A380 is so big, they had to custom make special gates for it at airports around the world. So it's not in the side gates, like on that side or over here. It's at the end, because that's the only spot big enough where it'll fit. As far as I know, the economy class is the entire downstairs lower floor. And uh, first in business, we're upstairs. Holy moly, this plane can hold over 600 people. Let's take a quick look at my seat. There are three screens. I have two windows, a whole mini bar, plus lots of outlets, and menus for meals as well as drinks. The moe would be wonderful. And it begins. We're served a hot towel and given a full toiletries case, including aftershave and cologne. Sometimes it's the little things. And the safety video here really does show you the size of this double decker plane. They even treat us to a Polaroid picture, if it's your first time. All this and we haven't even taken off yet. So here we go. A seven hour flight from Hong Kong headed to Dubai. And as we get into the air, once it's safe to do so, the first thing I need to see is the toilet. Gotta appreciate the faux wood touch and the fact that it has a window in here, plus even a little flower. But don't forget that at the back of the A380 is a small bar that's just for business and first class passengers. But it's midnight, so I'm headed back to my seat where, oh, they've put down the little mattress cover on it already. But first we have a warm snack of Kung Pao chicken. Not bad. And now it's time to lay flat and go to sleep. The stars in the ceiling are a nice touch and I'm gently woken up for breakfast. I think I got about four hours sleep. Those seven hours flew by and it's not long before we're coming in for a landing to Dubai, but we still have two more flights to get where we're going. Thank you, bye-bye. I've heard a lot about the Emirates lounges here in Dubai, but unfortunately we don't have enough time to stop as we have to make our connecting flight. This is a huge airport. I don't know if I've ever had to go so far between connecting flights before. Hopefully we make it. My flight is already boarding. In fact, it says it's already a final call on the board. So hopefully we make it. Wow, those are some impressive elevators. I'm actually sweating. <laughs> I, think we've, I think we've made it. And luckily for us, it's another Airbus A380. Now we're practically the last aboard here, which means we're taking the ramp to the lower level, economy, and then we get to walk up this staircase. This takes us into first class, which are much larger and more private cabins than we have. We're not in first class, we're in business. Still good. Greeted with that classic Emirates hospitality. I'll just have an orange juice, please. Thank you. A little early 
with the champagne. And a beautiful sunrise for our departure this morning. We're now flying from Dubai to Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, which should only be a few hours. For breakfast, I decided to change it up and I ordered the pancakes. Pretty good. And after all that running I did through the airport, I figure I might need a spray of this for the sake of the passengers around me. These flights have been incredibly comfortable, but as we start our descent, I'm no longer watching the entertainment center and I'm more closely looking for the desert that we'll be heading into. The fact that I can only see homes and businesses means we still have a little more travel to get out to that desert. Thank you. We have arrived in Saudi Arabia which is the country we've come to see, but we have further to go. More walking in the airport. I swear I get uh, my easy 10,000 steps a day when I'm at the airport. Wow. I guess we're here. But we don't actually have as much time as I thought we did, so we gotta check in for our third flight already. This is uh, back to back to back flights today. Holy cow. This place is huge. We're flying with Saudi Airlines next. That's it. Now I was really hoping we could have gone to the Emirates Lounge in Dubai because that's kind of their hub. I think that lounge would have been spectacular. Obviously we didn't have enough time. I think we have about an hour. We could go to the lounge here. So let's do that. Okay, honestly here, it was a bit of an unnerving feeling as I have another flight to take, but I've been greeted by these images of the unfortunate plane crash in Japan on the TVs. Not exactly what you want to see in an airport lounge. It seems like the lounge is pretty empty, but overall it's clean and has a very well-stocked buffet and pantry section. I got a coffee because we're only halfway through this day and I've been up a long time. Here we go, just starting to board our last flight of the day to Alula. King Abdulaziz International Airport. That was a, that was a nice airport. We are still in business class, sitting in the second row, but as you can see, it's a lot less flashy than the previous flights. However, we are greeted with Saudi coffee before taking off. Thank you. Saudi coffee. Now this is a really short flight, a little skip over some mountains until I start to spot some desert. Right? This is what we came to see. Parts of it actually look like the Grand Canyon. How spectacular is this? I can't wait to get out into it. Wow. This airport is really out here. This is so cool. Oh yeah. Entrance. So as we get off our airplane, there is not much to this airport. Just some tarmac to keep the planes and helicopters, and of course, a terminal with one carousel for us to pick up our bags. Well, see you later. Catch you later. All right, let's go see this desert. Oh, that is a good desert heat. It is substantially cooler than it was in Jeddah, but this is nice. That's me. Hey man, Ocean. Ocean, nice yeah, to meet nice you. Yeah, nice to meet you as well. Thank you very much. This is so nice. Some of these streets are incredible. This landscape reminds me a lot of like Utah, New Mexico, Colorado, but with all the palm trees, a little bit of California. The city of Alula here kind of feels like an oasis in the desert, but I don't really know what I expected. Now that we've picked everyone else up, we're heading to the desert. And when I say we're heading into the desert, I mean we are heading off the highway, going off-road. In fact, going where there are no roads. Is he well, stuck? Is it almost drifting? No, no. He's stuck? Oh well, yeah, maybe. He's stuck? But he's not in four-wheel mode. Oh, look. Sunrise in the desert already. Wait, you good? <coughs> yeah, go. Yeah! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Okay, we keep going. We're gonna try and reduce the tire pressures. <laughs> Sun sunscreen to the rescue. I'm not exactly sure where we're going, but I hear it's amazing. So now we get to see Saudi Arabia. Well done. Woo! Now don't stop! <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. What a cool adventure. <laughs> Are you kidding me? 
camel traffic out here. Oh my gosh. Wow. We've now arrived in, I don't know how to describe it. It is a stunning desert full of red rock canyons. Well, I'd say this is out in the Arabian desert. We've come all this way to Saudi Arabia to stand in the sand here. And I'm just thinking about how different this place is from where we started yesterday. But we've come all this way. So let's see what life in the Arabian desert is like. I need to introduce you to Mo. He's, hey. gonna, he's gonna take us out, show us around Saudi Arabia. Is that girl? A full driving? tour. Oh, sorry. Oh, a, a, a full tour. Full tour. Uh, uh. In fact, we've been invited to a very traditional sport here in Saudi Arabia. We are here at the Falcon Cup. Here's a quick description of the sport for you. They race their falcons. Pretty simple. Someone holds the bird at the start point, it flies off over a kilometer in the distance towards another handler, who is often waving some sort of bait for the bird to encourage them to fly quickly. And simple enough, they're timed. It's basically like a drag race for birds. Again, we're watching this from a huge and comfortable viewing area. Look at the seating area for the viewing. And as usual, greeted with Saudi cough. Thank you. For such a simple sport, it's amazing how quickly we got into it. It looks quick. Looks quick. Ooh! That's what you thought. Point two seconds slower. Ooh. We're gonna go. Listen to the We're announcer. Go. Oh! I'm still, I still got Darn. it. I mean, they take their falcon racing very seriously here. In fact, the prize pot for winning is quite large. $15 million prize. They enjoyed having a few foreigners visit and they even put us on TV. The amazing part is the timing for these birds to cover the distance. They're only separated by tenths of a second. In this group, he's the fastest. That was spectacular. And well, the nice little treat is afterwards, they invited us to meet the athletes. We've now been invited to come in and see the birds up close. They're very quiet, kind birds. What a unique experience here. Oh, not the powerful, outspoken athletes that you'd expect. How are you? Feeling ready to race? Feeling fast today? Hello. Oh, you like the camera already built for YouTube. You've got quite an audience here. But we have lots more to see here. And Mo says he has the best spot for us to see the sunset. Oh wow, look to the right, look to the right. We're now driving through a part of town where they've only recently discovered the old city underneath and begun to unearth it. Mo, Mo says this is his first time, but this is a historic city here. This is just right next to the road. This is incredible. But even the natural landscape here is incredible. Around every corner is another towering wall of red rocks. I mean, basically, as you can see, I'm absolutely in awe and in love with this landscape. And it only gets better as the sun gets lower and lower. I wonder where Moe's sunset spot could be. Wow, look, look at that. Ooh. Wow. This must be the spot. This is a sandy desert. Look at that. This, this is the light right here. Oh! So they call this the Elephant Rock. It's the most recognizable formation, basically tourist area in Alula. Oh, are we gonna get some donuts? We got some dune slashing anyways. Now you might think that there won't be much to do here once the sun goes down, but I'm assured that there's still a lot worth seeing. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. This is phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you for sharing Saudi Arabia with me. Nice to have you. Nice to have you in Saudi Arabia. I love those beautiful old Mercedes water trucks. What a cool and interesting part of the world. We're now headed a little further out of town to a site known as Hegra. Look at that sunset, it just keeps going. Ready? Let's go. Ready. Okay. All right. Thank you. We are now being pulled by horse in a carriage in an old wooden buggy. We've been dropped off and we're now taking a horse and buggy towards Saudi Arabia's first UNESCO World Heritage Site. <laughs> wow. Look at the stars. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. Oh, I see some lights on some rocks up ahead. Look, it's beautiful. <laughs> Look at them. 
Oh, oh guys, there it is on the left. Look at that. Oh, oh wow. These are ancient tombs carved into the desert rock. And we've arrived. Welcome to our land. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. In fact, there are over 110 tombs out here. So this is Hegra. I believe it's a sister ruins to Petra in Jordan. Hello. I have never seen a place like this before. It's like my garden. Yeah. How did they build this so long ago? Wow. This is amazing. At night, all lit up like this. Incredible. Now, instead of just having guides explain the history of the site, instead they've chosen to have people reenact what life would be like here when these tombs were built. They acted out a scene in Arabic. I didn't understand any of it, but the whole crowd is going this way now. It's, it's a play in which they're telling us the entire history of uh, Hegra oh. through characters which move and take us through the places. Oh, that's great. They're all over. I don't know how they build them up there. And the other thing is they're not just doorways. They're hollow inside. Oh my gosh, there's so many. So we've been given a tea and now we all find a spot to sit out here. Oh, yeah. oh there are dates and there's food right here. Oh yeah, there's oh, yeah, two. There is food. Yeah. That is food? That's yeah, all? Yeah, 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 yeah. There is more, one more, which is good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What an, did any of you guess the experience would be like this? No. Something different. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. 100% different. This one, sir. Good cheese and dry pig. This one, smoked hen chicken. This one, halloumi cheese brizola. This one, homos cannoli. And this one, al ula dates brimus. Wow. This is an incredible evening. Instead of just having us look at some well-carved holes into some desert stone, they really have us experience what life is supposed to have been like back then. Sitting together and trying their food under the stars. Oh, how nice. That's really nice. On to the next spot. There's so much about this trip that I didn't anticipate or expect. But as opportunities came up, I said yes. We've been told the market is now open. Look at this, look at this. So Hegra was the economic center of this region. So this is where the markets would have been. Really, they've done a fantastic job of replicating what it would have felt like. This has truly been a spectacular and eye-opening evening. May I cut it? They even have live camels. We saw one of these out in the wild today. With all of us in here, it feels like an active marketplace. Wow. Yes. Yeah, what more can we say than wow? I didn't know what to expect. A live play with the interactive audience showcases the culture. This was not just like any other performance. It was something different. It was something magical. Yes, and in such an incredible venue. Goodbye, Hegra. What could possibly be next? That was amazing. Are you guys hungry at all? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a restaurant nearby we should eat. This is the Sass Cafe, sitting well outside the city of Alula, out here in the desert. Oh my gosh, where are we? We're gonna be dining underneath the rocks here. I have never been to an open air restaurant like this before. Whoa. Wow. I, I never could have imagined eating at a place like this. The food is amazing, the ambiance is incredible, and the company has been phenomenal. Now this might be the end of our night, but it's not the end of my time here in Saudi Arabia. It's 5.30 a.m. and we are headed back into the desert. This is the start of the rest of our journey. So I figured I should introduce you. We have Ocean in the back from India, Lucas here from France, Marcus here from Sweden, Stefan also from France, and our fantastic local driver here. And we are headed to watch the famous Dakar rally. But that's in next week's video, with access to the drivers, the pits, and the track. So if you've enjoyed this video, I'd recommend subscribing, because I'd like to see you again right here next week. This is Downy Live, and I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me.